Um, I just gave a talk at home to some young athletes on contraception because someone might be on the depot and if they're on it for more than two years, they get bone mineral density loss. So then the question of, okay, well, how does the oral contraceptive pill come up? How does that affect things? It's like, well, let's look at the history of it. Initially came from Stanford, was funded by um, Catherine McCormick from McCormick family and a feminist activist, Margaret Singer. But because they are women, they couldn't get in the lab. So they got a guy from Stanford to develop the pill. And he's like, you know what? We need to put in a placebo week so that women feel like they're having a bleed. So if we're looking at the three active pills and then the one sugar pill week, it was by design to make women feel like they are having control over their menstrual cycle and they would still have a bleed. But it's not a true bleed, it's a withdrawal bleed. So this becomes the confusing point for people who are on an oral contraceptive pill. They're like, I get my period. It's like, no, you don't. Because the idea of the hormones that are in an oral contraceptive pill is to downregulate your ovarian function so that you don't ovulate. So you have a whole different hormone profile from someone who naturally cycles. So this depends on the type of oral contraceptive pill you're using. For the most part, monophasic is the one that's most prescribed. So that means the three weeks of the active pill is the same dose of estrogen, progesterone, and then you have your sugar pill week or your withdrawal week, and then you start again. When we look at the repercussions of using oral contraceptive pill in active women, there's a higher amount of inflammatory responses and oxidative responses. So from a training standpoint, no one's done the study yet, but I would be interested in doing this, of looking at how that impacts adaptation. You do end up with a new baseline of this when you start taking the pill, but we're not really sure how that impacts adaptation. We also look at the progestin component of the oral contraceptive pill, because we have four generations of progesterone. First generation was really high dose and has a lot of risk factors, not really prescribed that much. Second generation is the most prescribed. And this is the one that people just take, it's in your IUD, it's in your OC, uh, has the least amount of side effects. And then we have a third and a fourth generation. The fourth generation is primarily used for women who have really bad PMS or PMDD, which is your um, premenstrual dysphoria disorder. So significant mood issues because that progestin has a direct effect on a lot of the dopamine receptors in the brain as well. The third generation is very androgenic. 